traveling with children part two in my previous video i skipped over a few things and more has come to light since i first uh, drew it up and rather than redo the thing all over again i thought i'd just add to this um first of all uh, again i remind you make sure that all your documentation is done right and that you booked her either return flight or a carried forward what they call a throwaway ticket to their next destination if you're going to be um, coming here because you're not allowed to come in the country for longer than 29 days without a visa extension which you can't get till you get here so that being said if when you're traveling in the plane I'm not a big vaccine uh, COVID conspirator but I really recommend you wearing a mask or even a visor to insulate yourself from that uh, metal tube that you've been flying in for the last uh, 15 to 30 hours uh, sharing the air with everybody else. So yeah, mask and advice is, is recommended. Washing your hands every time you get the opportunity in the washroom. Don't forget to bring a pen. So when you disembark and you fill in the, te the entry declaration for goods, customs that you're prepared you don't have to borrow a pen i've had to do that a couple of times from other people and before you get on the flight crank yourself up with some vitamin c uh, get your immune system heightened and you might want to make sure that your hepatitis a and b shots are up to date although they don't require it i would recommend you have it just in case and then uh, for your hotel when you get here Try and aim for one that has uh, Wi-Fi and air conditioner. A bonus would be a pool and maybe even a generator, depending on when you travel. Best time to travel is between October and April. It's a drier season. However, uh, on the other end of that, it gets a bit wetter and the potential for typhoons, especially on the East Coast, is greater. So that's why you want to make sure there's a generator in play and they're ready with a plan. You can check Google Maps for hotel uh, sites anywhere on Google Maps. You can just follow them along the coast. They show you every resort, beach, so and there's literally thousands of them. So uh, shop away to your heart's content. And then you want to try and book on Agoda or Hotel.com or one of the websites because they'll offer a discount that you won't get if you show up on the doorstep. So you want to do that. At least for a couple of days to you get your bearings. And then, uh, yeah, you should be only drinking bottled water in the Philippines. Don't ever drink from a tap. One of the problems when my kids went to Canada is they got into the habit of drinking out of the taps. When we came back to the Philippines, we went, whoa, 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 you can't be drinking out of the taps here, even though this is their home. They just got used to it in Canada. So we have to watch out for that. Only bottled water. And as far as eating goes, I wouldn't eat any of the, any of the uh, sorry, sorry stores or cafeterias here. Eat at a proper restaurant or a hotel or with properly prepared food, street food. And it's just a risk you don't want to take. But, I mean, it may be fine, but who wants to take that chance on a vacation? Don't travel with jewelry. I did in McCaddy and I got robbed in broad daylight at 10.30 in the morning. It's my own stupidity. I just wore a gold chain that I'd bought in thailand and without even thinking i had it on the outside of my shirt and in one of the worst areas of the philippines in makati uh yeah i got robbed it wasn't a good experience anyway and if you're renting a car or an atv or boat or any kind of material good get your phone out and take some pictures of the uh the thing you're renting so that later on when you come back uh, and there's any claim of damage you've got some proof to cover yourself up because some do operate that way, kind of uh, nefariously. Uh, and you might want to look into just hiring a driver to remove that headache. Uh, driving is not uh, recommended at all here. Uh, I drive, we've got a car here, but I've been here for 12 years. And, but as a foreigner, if you're in an accident, they're going to look to you as Mr. Moneybags and going to go after you for that until you prove otherwise. So just avoid the risk. Hire a driver or enjoy the experience of a jeepney. It's kind of cool. You get to really hobnob and bump into other Fili the Filipino people. And uh, yeah, it can be a real experience. At uh, Christmas time, some of the kids, they 
uh, hop aboard the jeepneys and sing carols as you go down, and then uh, they'll put their hand out and beg. It's it's not uh, legal or anything like that, but uh, they, that's how they're doing the begging is through Christmas carols. It's kind of cute. Yeah, so you got jeepneys and you got these what they call tricycles. So they're uh, both pedal bikes and gasoline bike uh, three wheel vehicles that can get you around town. The, the pedal ones can only go in certain areas. Uh, they can't go on the major highways, but it's, that's a fun experience too. Or if you're daring, try a motor cab, climb in the back of a motorcycle with another guy driving for you. Uh, they're supposed to have helmets, but I half the time I forget about it. But uh, yeah, it's a quick way to get around and it's dirt cheap. I think it cost me, what, eight pesos to go up to the corner there. Uh, about, a, I don't know, a few quarters of a mile from my place. Eight pesos is pretty cheap. A jeepney cost me, uh, I don't know, what's a jeepney cost me? Like 20 pesos or something like that, which is like 50 cents. And uh, if I take an air-conditioned uh, taxi uh, to go to Ayala Mall, which is like, I don't know, five miles from here, it's five, six miles, it's... Uh, around 150 pesos which would be around three dollars so it's dirt cheap and if you're a senior or a person with disabilities you can expect a discount oh car alarms going there um now as for clothing you can bring some light long sleeve clothing for night times after 4 p.m that's when the mosquitoes come out so you want to make sure you get your arms and legs covered at that point reduce your risk but during the day yeah, uh, you want to get a tan or whatever, wear your shorts and t-shirts, you're fine, good to go. Key thing is to get out of the sun, uh, carry an umbrella or a baseball hat or something to keep yourself cool. And uh, when you're flying, here's the thing, when you get to the airport, we were overweight and in a few bags and I thought, oh, no problem, just charge the extra. And my mistake, I should have loaded everything into one bag because they charged a flat rate of $100 for every bag that was overweight. I could have put all the extra weight into one bag and charged me 100 bucks. As it was, I think I spent 300 So that was uh, a waste of money on my time, uh, my chance. So, And don't forget that when you're flying, don't pretend to be some uh, food connoisseur uh, and try something fancy or tasty or even a drink because your taste buds... Uh, they check out uh, when you're up at altitude, so you're not going to enjoy the food anyway. Save that for when you get to the hotel. Don't waste any any fancy meals on the special order list on airplanes. Uh, and then as far as when you get, first get on the plane, secure the kids in a seatbelt when they say to, when you first load up and take off. Because don't forget, once you're in flight, you can cut them loose, even with a... They'll, they'll yell at them for the uh, seatbelt sign in flight, but um, basically you're home free at that point. You just want to get sure you get off the ground. They're not likely to turn around and land a plane because your kid won't uh, secure a seatbelt when you're up at 30,000 feet. But on takeoff, yeah, they can be real sticklers for that and can actually ask you to deplane. So I wouldn't mess around with that. And you're going to get to know the Asian toilet experience. When you fly into Tokyo and uh, Miramida Airport, you're going to see some of the fanciest toilets in the world uh, with wash sprays and they blow dry and they do all kinds of crap. You can warm seats and it's a real toilet experience in Japan. But when you come to the Philippines, you'll be lucky to find a lid on the toilet and you won't be getting any toilet paper. You'll be having to use a bucket with water and washing yourself. Uh, in most situations, not in the hotels, of course, but I'm talking about if you're visiting people and, and that you can expect that. Uh, in Thailand, you'll get the squat toilet. You don't see that here in the Philippines. It's They're all basically uh, porcelain bowls, but most of the time it's missing the tank cover and the uh, toilet seat, so you're going to have to squat anyway. And a lot of kids, they'll step on the edges of the porcelain toilet uh, to squat anyhow, so yeah, I wouldn't be sitting on a porcelain toilet here. Uh, and then when you uh, land here, um, let the plane sit there. Let everybody get off. Just relax and wait. Hold the kids back. You don't want to be bumping into baggage. Those little heads are just at uh, baggage level. When people are taking those bags off, you, the last thing you want is somebody's 
carry on be landing on your kid's head. So just sit tight and wait for the rest of the plane to go because it's going to be at least half an hour before you'll see any luggage at the carousel. They take their time and you're going to have to deal with that. And then uh, don't forget that uh, you've been on the plane for hours and you probably want to use the can. I would suggest you use the can, the toilet before you. It might be the nicest toilet you see at the airport, but uh, yeah, use it there before you get in the lineup. There'll be a lineup for Filipinos, uh, for overseas foreign workers, and returning home, and then foreigners. You get in the foreigner lineup and get that done. Don't forget, there's no pictures to be taken within the customs area, and remove your glasses and your hats when they when they take their security shot. So they're gonna security is a little high level here. When, if you go through Hong Kong, you're going to have to go and get the plane and go through security all over again. Didn't experience that in Japan or in Korea, but in Hong Kong, uh, now I guess it's the communists ran over the place. So there are different rules there. And they're trying to gather as much data on foreigners as they can, I guess. So hopefully that helps as uh, so part two. And if uh, you'd like to hear more, uh, details and possibilities in the Philippines and travel through Asia. Uh, I'll probably be sharing some more experiences, uh, everything from uh, sleeping in a tiger preserve to being chased by monkeys. There's all kinds of stuff out there that we have come through. So, uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy my videos. Please leave your comments in the section below and make comments on the comments. Let's have a discussion here. Let's see what we can get going and share this with your friends. And if you'd like to subscribe, it'd be welcome to have you aboard. And like I say, don't bother with the notification bell. I mean, it may be good for the algorithm, but, but you don't want to be woken up at 2 o'clock in the morning because I just uploaded a video. Because don't forget, there's 12 hours time difference. So, all right. I uh, hope you have safe travels, and we'll see you in the next one.